best-selling author, Don Winslow, who Stephen King called one of America's greatest storytellers. He's retiring from book writing and shifting his focus to the fight for democracy. He will now be devoting his time to launching political videos and digital campaigns to support democratic causes and oppose Trumpism. In his announcement, he wrote in part this, Donald Trump was defeated in 2020, but Trumpism is a cancer that has metastasized across the country. I believe a more dangerous form of it will emerge after the November midterms. I I want to see real consequences for Trump, his family, and the enablers who share his cynical, soulless, corrupt, and subliterate worldview. I want to see real consequences for the architects of January 6th and not just the foot soldiers. Fifteen months after January 6th and not one single Republican lawmaker has been held accountable for their actions on J6, and not one has ever received a subpoena from the committee. Not one. Without consequences, they will win re-election and cause more chaos. The Democratic Party has better ideas, better candidates, a better vision for tomorrow. What they don't have is better messaging. And I'm going to try and change that. Let's bring in the New York Times bestselling author. He joins us now. Don's out this week with his new and perhaps last novel. <laughs> It's part of a trilogy titled City on Fire. Don, thanks so much for being with us. Um, we can talk about your book, or we can talk about Donald Trump. I think you'd rather talk about Donald Trump. But if you want to talk about your book, we can do that as well. So, so Don, uh, I remember uh, right after January the 6th uh, being absolutely uh, enraged that you could have Donald Trump leading this, this, this movement to go up and trash the Capitol. You could have Rudy Giuliani on January 6th talking about combat justice. You could have members of Donald Trump's family pointing at the Capitol saying, you know, you, you should be scared, pointing at the Capitol, basically saying we're going to go up there uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, take care of you guys in, in so many words. Uh, and yet, no justice. No, nobody uh, even questioned uh, from uh, these people Kevin McCarthy was talking about, these members that he thought had had a part in the January 6th occurrences. Uh, so what should Americans think? Well, Americans should look back at this, not just to January 6th, but to all the corruption, all the injustices, all the attempts to overthrow the legitimate government of the United States. You know, Joe, it was five years ago that Donald Trump bragged on your network that he had fired James Comey in order to shut mm -hmm. down the Russian investigation. Three and a half years ago, Mueller came out and said they're prepared, cases that could be filed, and nothing's been done. And then, as we said a little earlier, 16 months have passed since the disgraceful events of January 6th. Not a single Republican has been subpoenaed. No one has testified under oath. None of these Republican leaders have testified under oath. There be no consequences. So, and we're talking, you're talking about a man, I'll just add one more in, who tried to shake down Volodymyr Zelensky <laughs> to get dirt on Joe <laughs> Biden. And, and, and at this point still will not speak out against Vladimir Putin. Let's bring in to the conversation Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and associate editor of the Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst Eugene Robinson. Uh, and, and Jean, you've got a column as, as well uh, entitled No Republican Who Participates in the War on Truth Deserves your vote. And you write in part this, the GOP has made clear that it intends to run a post-truth campaign in November in the November elections. No Republican who goes along with this abominable strategy, no Republican who doesn't publicly denounce it, deserves your vote. Not a single one of them. Republicans tolerated Donald Trump's lies for years. But this tendency to excuse mendacity shifted from bad habit to mortal sin with the party's embrace of that big lie about the election Trump lost to Joe Biden.
This state of affairs can't be blamed entirely on Trump. Republican elected officials have a choice and are choosing to lie. Voters must choose to send the liars home. So, Gene, uh, how, do, how do Democrats, I guess, point these lies out? Because Republicans are doing gr a great job of muddling the truth. I'm thinking of Congresswoman Maria Salazar just twisting the truth into a pretzel on a live TV interview uh, about the big lie, about January 6th, about Kevin McCarthy's lies, and doing it with, with great confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Well, you have to you have to call them out on the lies, uh, and um, just you, you, ultimately you have to go to the voters. But I mean, th just think about how outrageous this is, um, Mika. Just stand back from it for a moment. Um, look at David. Purdue, and you know, twice now in his debates against Brian Kemp for the in the Georgia governor's race, he has started debates with the lie, right? Just saying flat out that the that the uh, 2020 election was rigged and stolen, which is a proven lie, and that. Is that umbrella lie provides shade and cover for all the other lies that Republicans are telling? It's it's like a, a habit. It's like they're almost um, compulsive about the lying now. And so you have somebody like Kevin McCarthy who lies and then lies about the lie and then lies about the lie about the lie. Uh, it, it's just uh, it, it's incredible um, how, how you get this message through. Is um, is I think the way you get any message through, which is. Uh, you, you, you find, um, you know, sharp, uh, concise ways of, of, of putting it, and you repeat it, and you say it again and again and again, and eventually you have to trust that you you, you start to get the message through. But but you can't have these people uh, in charge of, of the country. They're disqualifying themselves. They really are. Don Winslow, the small handful of Republicans who've done exactly what you suggest they do, which is to speak up and tell the truth. Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, Mitt Romney on many occasions. It's a short list, have become pariahs inside the Republican Party. In other words, if you have the temerity to say, no, the 2020 election was not stolen and what happened on January 6th was very, very bad and cannot happen again, they try to run you out of the party. So what do you do with a, a party and a leadership that is happy to either support explicitly or to go along with all the lies that Donald Trump has perpetrated? Well, I think you have to ignore them and you have to talk directly to the people. You have to tell them, as Mr. Robinson said, in short, concise and strong language, the truth about these things. And I think there's a great appetite out there. I've been astounded that we've had over 250 million views on our videos. I think people want to hear the truth and they're ready to hear the truth. And let's try to tell it to them. All right, Don. Tom Winslow, I want to thank you for coming on. But before we go, tell us about your new novel entitled City on Fire. Hopefully not your last. Well, thank you. It's not the last. There'll be two more coming. Uh, I've already written them. It's a crime story about a guy named Danny Ryan marries into the uh, Irish mob and and is forced, therefore, to get into a war uh, with the Italian mafia. Uh, it's a very personal book to me, the, the first book I've set in my hometown in New England. And so, yeah, it's an important book to me. I've been working on it for about 30 years. Oh, wow. Don Winslow, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. The book is City on Fire. And Eugene Robinson, thank you as well. We'll be reading your new piece in the Washington Post. Definitely not the last for you. Up next. We're